Hi, this is Harish here. Welcome to DB2 LUW Tips and Tricks video tutorial part 61. In this video tutorial, I'm going to talk about how to restrict non-Unicode clients accessing Unicode database. So this slide talks about the problem and solution. The problem scenario is uh, under a DB2 instance, let's um, assume we have a DB2 Unicode database. So we want to restrict non-Unicode clients accessing the Unicode database. So only Unicode clients are allowed to access Unicode database. So that is what we are trying to do. So what is the solution for this? So the solution is very simple three step process. The first step is to create connections event monitor writing to table. So it's a table based event monitor. The event monitor is for monitoring connections. So what this will do is it will populate the table event monitor table for every connection. So here only we can get the information for this particular application ID for this particular application handle. Uh, what is the client code page? Right. So that code page, if 1208 means it is Unicode, if it is uh, uh, other than 1208, it is a non-Unicode client uh, like that, we can uh, understand that. So that information will be available in that event monitor table. Second step is to create a stored procedure. So this stored procedure will actually contain the logic. So it will query that particular event monitor table and it will figure out, okay, so if the client uh, code page is a 1208, which means it is a Unicode client, so allow the connection. So if it is a non-unicode client, then uh, raise an error, right? So the what happens if you raise an error is the connection gets uh, like the disconnection. So uh, it, the connection won't go through, right? Okay. So that's the second step. Now the third step, uh, like say for every connection, the stored procedure has to get invoked. And obviously the, it should be like an implicit call, right? I don't want every end user to call the stored procedure, right? So it, it, it should be an implicit call. So that's why we have to update the dbcfg using connect underscore proc parameter, the stored procedure name. So if you if you do this third step, what will happen is for every client connection that is coming in, after that authentication process, right? Uh, what will happen is the stored procedure will be executed implicitly as the first step. So that's why we need the execute access to the public. So for every connection, the stored procedure will be implicitly executed. And based upon the logic, it, whether it raises an error in, in that way, the connection will be disallowed or it, it will just, uh, the stored procedure will smoothly exit, in which case the connection will be allowed. So let us uh, look uh, this as an example, that way it will be better to understand. So first I have started the instance here, then I'm going to run one particular SQL, solution.sql. Okay, let's see what that solution.sql does. Okay. So it should basically carry your uh, three steps, right? So the it is connecting to the sample database. Okay, so after that, let's see, it's going to take some time. It's the first time it is getting connected. Okay. Okay. Then it is creating the event monitor, uh, right to table. So table based event monitor, auto start. And you can see that con header, right? Okay. So let's see here. See con header, which means I'm only populating one table. Okay. So the event monitor will have some four or five tables. Okay. To populate. So we don't want all that information, right? So I'm just putting only con header. And then this is the procedure that I'm talking about, con.init. So it contains the code page, application ID, application handle. So mon get application handle will give me the application handle. Mon get application ID routine will give me the application ID. Then I'm flushing the event monitor. See, once a connection is made, right, the event monitor data will not be available in the table. It will be in the memory only, in the monitor buffer area only. So I have to flush the event monitor. So for that, I'm preparing the statement and executing the statement and I'm using a commit so that the table gets populated and commit is also done. So this is the important code. Select case when code page ID will one to zero eight, then code page ID, else raise error, see here. Sorry, only Unicode clients are allowed. So I'm raising an error like that. So from where I'm taking this information, con header underscore con underscore evmon, the, the table event monitor uh, data, which we populated. So for a particular application ID, for a particular uh, application handle, uh, what is the code page ID with which it comes in, right? So the client code page ID, basically. So if it is 1208 means it is a Unicode client, so allow it. If it is a non-1208, then raise error. That is a logic here. And execute uh, procedure, like execute access on procedure to public, then update that uh, third step, connect underscore proc, right? So that is the third step. So now we have done everything, okay? So what I'll do next, I'll activate the sample database and I'll try to connect. So if I do this, obviously it should show me the error, right? So because I should not be allowed to uh, connect, but the activation will be done. Okay. See the activate database command is successful. Okay. 
when it's it's only applicable for client connections see here now it has raised application raised error or warning with diagnostic diagnostic text sorry only unicode clients are allowed so we cannot connect now right that's the whole whole uh, idea behind this so and also we can see here like list applications and db2 connect i'm just showing these two because the connection completely got rejected right so uh, i'm just displaying that so no applications are there on the server db2 connect database connection does not exist okay so next what we'll do so we'll go to uh, another instance so now we need to run uh, this thing as a uh, unicode client right then only we can able to connect right so let's copy that so i'll go to another window this is another db2 clp window uh, but here the db2 code page is set as 1208 so usually it will be 1252 for a windows machine okay and this will not be set it's implicitly 1252 okay uh, i am setting this registry variable explicitly to 1208 so that this particular command prompt window will act like a unicode client okay so then i can issue the connect statement connect to sample user using harish so what will now happen is the connection will be allowed see here because this the it will execute the stored procedure and uh, uh, the stored procedure will smoothly come out right because the, that's the condition we have given right so the connection is successful now so only unicode clients will be allowed so we have configured it that way now so i will do the connect reset okay and now i am executing one db2 con.bat okay so let me just do that also okay so db2 connect reset okay so just ignore that now this con.bat is actually running a java program see what so this 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 is fine with db2 client right db2 command window so what if my if i am accessing using jdbc right so jdbc by default uses uh, unicode only so you, that's why i am uh, right i have given a simple uh, program in uh, java which is connecting the connecting to the database the first line is for compilation the second line is for sorry the first line is for setting the class path the second line is for compilation of the program it is generating a class file dbcon so now this dbcon will connect to the database and it will you know it is displaying some values so these are some records in the database table okay so you can see that okay we can also see like this so db2 list applications okay so you should see see db2 jcc this connection so a java client will usually use uh, Uh, unicode only so that that's no problem so this will uh, affect only non unicode clients so either it is jdbc or c application program or whatever it is right so if i say q it will quit okay so that's it so i hope uh, this information was useful to you uh, thank you uh, so much for watching this video please subscribe to my channel db2 luw academy see you in the next video tutorial until then bye bye